Um, you know, I wanted to ask you, so in the carnivore space, there's a lot of people that eat meat only for a while, maybe very few carbohydrates, and then they start seeing their glucose, their resting glucose in the morning, um, a little bit higher, the a one C is a little bit higher for the three month mark. Yeah. And so they start worrying, Oh, no, this diet isn't good for me because now my blood sugar is in the nineties. My a one C is closer to 5.5 when it used to be 4.8 on Mm -hmm, keto, mm -hmm. this diet's wrong. And so is it better? I mean, so why one is that happening? And then two, is it better to almost have your, your glucose at 90, but then without many fluctuations throughout the day, or like your morning glucose is 70, but then when you eat your foods, maybe you have some carbs, but your blood sugar is going up to 130 and then back down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That what these are what a great question. So I two two thoughts come to mind relevant kind of to the two key parts of the question. Um, the kind of paradoxical rise in glucose, and then the you know fasting states every morning, and then the HbA1c, the hemoglobin A1c, which I look at as kind of a distinct thing although often we, we lump them together. So with the glucose levels hovering around the nineties, my view, frankly, is there's nothing more pathological about having a glucose of 95 than there is a glucose of 85. I know of no studies that have shown any conclusive evidence whatsoever that that kind of 10 milligram per deciliter um, change is going to be any way harmful. So um, I don't think people need to get too worried about that. Um, even maybe around a hundred, frankly, uh, I think that is all within a normal range. It's all in a healthy, normal range. Now, however, the other question aspect of this that you mentioned is why would that be happening? Why would someone who's eating essentially a zero carbohydrate diet have an increase in their glucose or at least an inability of it to drop? There is no answer to that question. That is probably the single most common question I've ever been asked in my whole time being involved in podcasts and social media. We actually have a study going on right now to try to find that. And we have people wearing continuous glucose monitors and, um, and, and, they, and we're having them do macronutrient tests over various weeks where they're drinking pure protein, pure fat, and pure glucose. My theory is some people are more protein sensitive than other people. So we know that amino acids will have a stimulatory effect of um, stimulating glucagon release from the pancreas. And I think, and we know in type two diabetics, we know that this can happen in people where they eat a certain load of protein and they will have a much higher glucagon release than someone who's not a diabetic. I think that there are people who have that similar protein sensitivity and, and a much higher release of glucagon in response to protein than other people do. And when glucagon goes up, it wants to increase glucose in the blood. And so that's where I think it's happening in some of these people that adopt essentially zero carb diets. It's just that all that protein, which I think is a good thing, is stimulating glucagon to a higher amount than average. And thus they're seeing a higher glucose level in the blood. Again, though, I don't think that's a problem. And then lastly, your comment about the hemoglobin A1C, how people will see that it's going up. That can be a result of two things. And I think it's the second I'll mention that too many people overlook, including in clinical practice. Yes, hemoglobin A1C can be a reflection of an elevated glucose. Yes, that's true. But there's another part of that formula or another variable that's going into this formula. Hemoglobin A1C is glucose and hemoglobin Mm. or the red blood cell itself. And too many people only look at the uh, the glucose part and totally ignore the hemoglobin or red blood cell part of it. Hemoglobin is just a part of red blood cells. Um, so what I think can also be happening in this case, and there's some limited case reports in the published literature to confirm this, which is why I'm mentioning it at all. So it's partly a theory of mine and, and partly backed up by data. Um, the more nourished a person is, especially with red, red meat and beef, I believe the longer the red blood cells live, that essentially the red blood cells are healthier and they last a lot longer They can last up to, you know, maybe 50% longer than someone who's say a vegan and who's eating very, very, um, uh, you know, nutrient deficient diets for the most part. And uh, the longer a red blood cell is alive, just the more likely it is to get glycosylated or to have a glucose bind to it. And so what I think may be happening in these people with long lived red blood cells is that they're kind of getting a false positive with their hemoglobin A1C test. So they get a hemoglobin A1C and it's in the mid fives 
and the clinician will say, oh, wow, you're, it looks like you're kind of getting pre-diabetic. When in reality, their glucose levels are in the 80s or maybe low 90s. Those are very, very good levels. Even I would say around 100. Um, those are fine glucose levels. It's just that they have really long lived red blood cells. In contrast, you could have someone with elevated glucose levels and a normal hemoglobin A1C, and they would get a pat on the back. And that's just because they actually have really short lived red blood cells. The red blood cells die so quickly that they never have time to get glycosylated. And thus they end up having a false negative. You think, you know, you have this false sense of security that their glucose levels are actually okay, when in reality, they're not great, and they are trending in a wrong direction. It's just the HbA1c doesn't detect it, again, because it's a problem with the red blood cells in this case. Yeah, and um, the limited research I did, I found similar things. And I think one other article I read said that the last 30, like the other thing is that the A1C is imbalanced in that it's a weighted average. So the last 30 days weigh more than like if you were eating cleaner for the 90 days. Yeah, yeah. So what I got from everything was, okay, so it may be just one of those markers again, where for a low carb ketogenic that eats a very meat heavy diet or a carnivore diet, the blood markers may be different and that's okay. And it seems yeah. like the A1C glucose is another um, one of those.